the figure eight follows through. This is the first knot that all climbers learn to use because it's the universally accepted way to tie into a harness. First, we'll start by creating a figure eight. This can be done by passing the working end behind the rope, going around and then passing it into the eye. A faster way, and the way I prefer to do it, is to create a bite, twist it two times, and then reach through the eye. Once you grab the working end and pull it through, you have yourself a figure eight. At this point, you'll take the working end and you'll string it through whatever you're going to be tying into. Going in the reverse direction from the knot, you'll just follow the exit in the reverse direction being sure to keep itself parallel. And to finish this knot, a safety knot similar to the fisherman's knot is preferred. The next knot is the triple fisherman's knot. This is great for absorbing shock, and it uses the coils to absorb a lot of the energy. You could say it's more cushion for the pushing, and it's a reason why a lot of climbers use this knot to create loops. The double or the triple fisherman's knot are very similar to each other, the only difference is the number of wraps. With the working ends overlapping and pointing in opposite directions, you'll do three wraps around itself and the other line. To finish off this side, you will tuck it in underneath itself. The same thing is done on the other side, going the opposite direction. When you pull it tight and finish it off, the two coils are going to fit nicely into each other. The Flemish bend or the figure eight bend is a solid knot that can hold a lot of weight. To start the figure eight, you'll begin with a bite and you'll twist it twice. Once the bite is twisted, you'll reach through the eye and pull the working end through it to create the figure eight. The working end of the second line follows the line of the figure eight, starting from the working end. The finishing knot should be neat without any crossing lines. You can do an overhand knot around the standing end to finish the ends if you'd like. This helps secure everything and is also referred to as safety knot. The Alpine butterfly loop is a midline loop that can bear load on any strand or any direction on the loop. The Alpine butterfly loop is used in many different applications in climbing and rigging. It's used to build anchors, like shown here, and you can also use as a clipping point for any part of the rope. Creating a pull handle to heave rope or line, which is especially important because we never want to wrap the rope around our hand. It can also be used to haul tools to an elevated job site. And in some instances, it can also be used to isolate damaged or frayed sections of rope without having to cut it or splice it. Since this is a midline loop, we're gonna start out on a bite. We're gonna take the bite with our left hand and we're gonna rotate it two times to make a 360 turn. You'll notice that it creates two loops, one on the right hand and one on the left hand. We'll take the furthest loop and we'll flip it below the closest loop. You'll notice that there's a small loop at the top and a larger one at the bottom. We'll take the loop that's at the bottom, the larger loop, and we'll fish it through the eye of the smaller loop. 
Once everything is dressed, you'll notice that we'll have a beautifully tied alpine butterfly loop. The water knot is used for tape or tube webbing, and the primary purpose for it is to create slings or anchors. Be careful when using this knot, because if it's going to be running up against stuff, it can get caught on different objects and could potentially come undone. To start this knot, you'll start with an overhand knot, being sure to leave plenty of tail. You'll notice that it makes a little bit of a pentagon shape. You'll take the other piece of tape and you'll follow the original knot in the reverse direction. To make sure everything's dressed, both of the pieces of tape should lay flat against each other. Set the knot by putting a lot of tension on it. If the knot's not set properly, it might come loose during use. The clove hitch. The clove hitch is used a lot for anchor building, as well as holding yourself onto the wall if your blader goes down for any reason. To start the clove hitch, you'll form two identical loops. You'll place the second loop that you formed on top of the first loop. At this point, you'll just clip in and make sure you lock your carabiner. To do this one-handed, go ahead and have your rope already looped into the carabiner. With your hand that's on the side of the gate, you'll reach around the top rope and reach for the back rope. Hook your thumb and grab onto that rope, and you'll start to form a bite. At this point, all you have to do is flip and rotate your wrist, and then clip in. You'll notice that it does the exact same thing as the previous way, only it does it a little bit faster. And here it is in real time. The Prusik knot is used in ascending, backing up a belay, and also for self-rescue. This knot easily slides when not loaded, and it grips really hard when there's tension put on it. The good thing about this particular Prusik version is that it goes both ways. We'll start with an accessory cord made into a loop using a double or triple fisherman's knot. Offset the knot so the pressure isn't directly on the knot, and you'll pass part of the loop behind the rope. At this point, you'll pass the larger part of the loop with the knot through this little tiny loop three to four times. After this, you'll pull on the larger part of the loop and dress it so that everything runs smoothly. The Munter is a friction knot used when your belay device gets dropped or is broken. This particular knot is hard on ropes, so use it sparingly. But in a rescue situation, it will control your descents and catch falls. To build this from scratch, form a bite using the braking side, and twist it two times counterclockwise. You'll go clockwise if you're left-handed. You'll notice that a loop is formed from the bite. You'll take a carabiner and clip into this loop and on the climbing side. Be sure the gate is facing away from your braking side. The reason for this is that when you're belaying someone, your rope isn't rubbing up against the gate, which could make it potentially fail. You'll notice that the knot flips when you're switching from taking in slack or giving slack. If you're already looped in, there's a quick way to do the munter hitch. Form a bite on the climbing end, rotate it counterclockwise, or clockwise if you're left-handed, and clip it in. 
If you guys have any more requests for different knots, go ahead and message me directly or comment down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and also check out my Facebook page and other social media. But as always, take care out there.